All right, people, let's get in. Open yeah. doors, shall we? Very freaking cool. And you're recording. Yeah, man. Let's do this. Awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hello, hello, everyone. And welcome, welcome, welcome to this stream. To Robin, to John, to Bo, to Angelina, to In KYC, not KFC. And welcome to Nana. Hey, Nana, what's up? And to Peter and Normarling's Commune. Wow, okay, cool. We have the municipality on board. Good thing I'm wearing a shirt. Uh, great tour gear. Wow, are you tuning in from the Faroe Islands? If you are, then pick up my man. Your man. <laughs> and uh, welcome, Vegard and uh, Stefan H. Awesome. Beautiful Roel. Wow, is it you, Roel, from, uh, from down south, southern part of Jutland? If it's you, then pick up, man. And uh, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, Torgir from ah from Norway. Bad, glad. Uh, welcome to, welcome to. <laughs> so today is uh, round two of uh, this uh, music making with Ableton Live, eleven seminar series that we are running. And to those of you who tuned in yesterday, what's up? Good to see you again. I look forward to continue where we left off uh, from yesterday. And to those of you who are new just tuning in what's up i'm happy to see you and uh, don't worry i will give a brief recap of what we did yesterday and uh, then today we'll be looking at kind of un unfolding this uh, 16 bar idea that we laid down in the session yesterday rant and hey another cheers from norway awesome hey if you don't mind uh, those of you who are already tuned in uh, drop us a hello in the uh, in the chat and let us know where you're from, how long you've been making music, and uh, what you're most excited to see. Like, what is what are you excited about, or what are you currently struggling with? Then we have an idea of where we are in the world map, and where we are on the music making map. Yeah, and you can do that in the chat, the chat box, for those of you who are not Zoom ninjas already. <laughs> Okay, cool. I'm seeing the attendee number rise. Pro, but logic user. Bo, don't worry about it. Everyone's welcome here. We're making art and the tools you use. It's not about that. Except today a little bit it is, but it's mostly about the music. <laughs> and we have Jakob from Umeå, Sweden. Uh, beginner, just starting with something I've dreamt out for decades. Big up, Jakob. Man, much respect for, uh, for following your dreams. Much, much respect. And to everyone else who are totally new, big, big, big up, men and women and all everything in between. Uh, I cannot uh, give more cadeau to people following their dreams. Music's supposed to be fun. Art is supposed to be fun and playful. And all this technicality stuff, it's just hurdles that we need to figure out on the way so that we can be faster and more comfortable when we're making music and art. Yeah. Vegard from Norway. Have not been making music before, but always been interested in trying. Yes, Vega, same thing goes out to you. And Miko uh, from Finland, awesome. Pro musician since youth. Yes, man. If you have any comments on some pro tips, you're welcome to drop them on the chat. Uh, drop some knowledge on us, on us. And Lucas from Stockholm. Various instruments ever since but making only last few years. Okay, cool. So a musician, like let's say traditional instruments, transitioning into computers, digital audio workstation. Yeah, okay. Well, nice to know who is uh, tuning in with us here. And a little Cubase and Ableton. Stian, awesome, from Norway. Oleksi from Ukraine, what's up, man? Uh, living in CP8 started making music six months ago. Cool, dude, you should come down to Romkraft. This is where I'm streaming at right now. And it's, uh, it's a musical playground for uh, anyone who's interested in, uh, in making music with the uh, computer or DJing. Now I just show you a little bit 
around here. So we have a full DJ setup. We have a little uh, upstairs. I'm not going to talk about that on a webcam. That's not allowed. Um, and then uh, over here, we have a good like music production session. You can borrow pushes and you can drink coffee from these awesome cups that you can also buy. Yeah, and support us so that we can survive Corona. Antoine, I hope it's okay with you that I'm dropping some commercials on people. <laughs> <laughs> totally, man. All right. And uh, yeah, I'll just say welcome to the last couple of people. Then you can take over. Uh, Angelina from Norway as well have made music since 15 years. Wow, cool. Angelina, I hope I hope I can teach you something new. And uh, and if not, then congrats. Like you're already well on your on your journey. And we have Kjell from Sweden, 150 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle. Wow. Please send us some photos of the Northern Lights. We need to see that. <laughs> Music hobbyist, not professional, Ableton beginner. Respect. And we have Clay, DJ from Norway. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a common transition, you know, coming from, uh, from DJ world, playing with other people's tunes and then wanting to make your own uh, weapons for the dance floor. Totally understand it, Clay's Man, if you are already familiar with DJing, you know how to read waveforms, you know how to count music, you're already way ahead and you can just dive into the technicalities of the program and you're good to go. Respect. Uh, Yexel, that was... Olexi, man, I'm glad to hear that you signed up for the newsletter. I will see you online then. And Andreas from Sweden. Trombone and bubble bass, electric basses. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, yeah. A lot with video, Adobe Premiere will know as much as possible of Ableton. Okay, everyone, thank you. Thank you for, uh, for sharing that information. Uh, I'll shoot it over to, uh, to Antoine in a second, and I know he, uh, he's got some goodies for you as well. So uh, big up, everyone. Uh, we'll dive right into it in a bit. Cheers. All right. Um, hi, Rasmus. Hi, uh, Merlin. Hi, everyone. And thanks for tuning in tonight. Uh, I'm Antoine. I work for Ableton. And uh, I'm really happy to welcome you tonight to this session with Rasmus. Yes, the net was just amazing. And uh, for those of you who were there, uh, I think you're, we're all eager to see where Rasmus is going to take that uh, beginning of a track that he he started to to do for us. Um, yeah, let me just uh, tell a few words uh, before that. I see that there are quite a few beginners uh, who are in the, in the very early stages of their making music journey. So first of all, welcome to that wonderful world. And, um, and yeah, working for Ableton, uh, we, we make live, we make push, but we also make a, a bunch of really useful resources for who wants to, to get started making music. So I'll just paste a couple of links in the chat box here. Uh, first off is this website, we're learning music.ableton.com. Uh, yeah, that Rasmus is, uh, is showing right now. And, um, this is uh, a full course that's uh, free and that's available to anyone. It's interactive. You can learn how to create beats, melodies, chords. You can learn the basics of music theory uh, through it. And it's yeah, definitely a, a really useful resource for also people who, who are already seasoned musicians. Uh, it's translated in a bunch of languages. Uh, so share it around you this is uh, this is free and this this uh, is a lot of work but uh, in the end really rewarding to see uh, so many people around the world uh, that are learning through the, these tools we also make learning synth which is uh, the sound design equivalent of learning music where you're going to learn how to program synths learn the basics of uh, sound design, so creating your own sonic material through an interactive interface that's uh, also, and it's uh, a full synth engine that's built in a browser. So it's accessible to anyone, anywhere. 
and here also we translated this work in, in many languages so you you're more than welcome to to share that around share the good word and uh, and definitely have fun with it because it's uh, it's such uh, an incredible uh, fun like machine this uh, this website uh, we also create a uh, a music making summit so that's an event that happened or used to happen back when events were happening uh it's a yearly summit for music makers and uh we've we've done it in berlin where we come from uh for many for several years uh we did it in los angeles california uh in 2018 and that's the last time that we did it uh a lot of the sessions that we uh, have at loop are recorded and uh, a lot of these recordings are available and there's it's basically a, a huge source of inspiration to like listen talks from engineers from artists from educators from producers from label uh, managers from any any kind of profiles that are related to to music making and you have a bunch of uh, presentations uh performances yeah and, it's yeah. if I, I i need i need to add something to this antoine i mean loop is insane it is it's the best festival which is also a uh, like a seminar for music makers and educators where you can party but it's also a festival where you get to learn stuff it's like the best intersection of both worlds and if you look at this picture right here we have dj jassy jeff we have robert henge and we have the Mimu gloves here, which Imogen Heap use. And just up here, we have Lee Scratch Perry, just to name a few of the people who have been presenting there. And I really want to highlight one of these things, which is the breakbeat deconstruction, which is highly academic and also highly musical and super inspirational. And, and it, the whole festival is just like that. So I hope that it can continue soon so we can get back to this creative soup. <laughs> <laughs> We're definitely looking forward to that. And yeah, one last thing I want to, to speak about is uh, this book. We also edit a book, uh, which is called Making Music, uh, 74 Creative Strategies. I just put a link. Uh, this is a link to the website. Uh, this is a book that we sell. Uh, however, uh, out of the 74 chapters, I think uh, it's I think it's 24. I'm not really sure of the number are available for free and these are sorted in three categories problems uh, with beginning a track problems with uh, progressing in the track and uh, finally progress the problems uh, related to finishing the track so if you go to the left section and the chapters you can see all these chapters uh, listed there and uh, and you can already learn a lot from there and uh, and then yeah, the book is uh, is also available. Uh, we made it available for free uh, at the beginning of the Corona pandemic as a as a PDF. I'll I'll dig out and see if the link is still valid, and uh, if so, I'll share it later in the chatter. Okay, I'll I'll hand it over in a minute to Rasmus. I just need to speak about how the session is going to work today. Uh, we have so this is a Zoom webinar, so you have two main sections for interactions. You have a chat, which is uh, down at the center of your screen. This is for general interactions between you and on chit chat or whatever you want uh, to say or you have on your mind. And you also have a Q&A section. The Q&A section is on the bottom right of your screen. Uh, this is where you ask your questions to Rasmus. And we have Merlin here with us, who's uh, going to uh, help and answer uh, some of your questions uh, along the way and uh, and Merlin uh, can basically ask Rasmus to to answer any any of the questions that you you think he thinks uh, are uh, should be answered by by Rasmus <laughs> and you can sorry for my poor English <laughs> this is the end of the a long day um, yeah, you can upvote questions in the Q&A as well. So if you find questions super interesting, uh, just upvote them. So they're they more likely to get answers. And uh, I guess this is it for me. Uh, enjoy the session uh, and uh, yeah, look forward to see what you got for us, Rasmus. Bring it on.
Yeah. Thanks, Antoine. Thanks, Antoine, man. I, I love that the Fringlish. <laughs> <laughs> we don't get that enough, man. We don't get that enough. All right. Yeah. So really, really good resources that Antoine shared with you. Just to show you one of the things that I mentioned yesterday, yesterday about composing melodies. If you are a beginner to making melodies, just having someone say, hey, just come up with a melody. It's easy. Just <laughs> it's not always that easy if you don't know what it actually is. But going through this um, uh, making music website, like what I talked about yesterday, is forming these kind of contoural patterns. So, so view it as a walk, like you know, in the in the fairy tales, uh, there's always home, out, home, and the hero is at home first, goes out, experiences something, grows as a person, and comes back, just like life. So a melody is a bit like that. And you can see it as taking steps on this journey, small steps, big steps, uh, up and down, back and forth, all that. And, and, and all those lessons are just free in here. And they have the Ableton Live look, so it's super easy to, to translate that to the door. So uh, yeah, check it out. I don't know if the book is still available in print, but it's really awesome and it's gray. So it's in that German color that we all love. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess that's it again. Uh, thank you everyone for sharing your information in the stream and uh, we will share the one from yesterday if the quality is okay otherwise you just have to stay tuned on uh, on Romkraft's site I'm talking to you Pasi Rantanen um, and everyone else who's interested in catching up from yesterday uh, and also uh, yeah shortly we'll have some more information about uh, videos on YouTube so do stay tuned on uh, Ableton's uh, social media and do stay tuned on uh, on Romkraft's uh, information channels as well. And I will just give you the link to our newsletter here. Uh, yeah, like this. And you can write that you're from this seminar and we'll do a raffle and you can win uh, memberships uh, to our website. Yeah, okay. So... Um, Sorry, Raz, I just need to, to add something I forgot. Uh, ah, yes. <laughs> this is uh, a link to uh, a survey that we're making just to know how, how we did uh, today. Uh, thanks to all of you who posted feedback on the session yesterday. This has helped uh, us. And you, <laughs> this is one of, of the reasons why you see the, this massive mouse pointer on Rasmus' screen is because yesterday was uh, difficult to see. So yeah, please um, please come with your with your feedback. It will help us uh, get better uh, as we as we go along. And this is it. Thanks again. Have a good yeah. session. Thank you. Cool. So let's get into it. Right. So I got live I got live eleven opened now here, and it might look a little bit confusing because this is <laughs> this is uh, just jumping into the session from uh, from yesterday but the first thing i want to touch on here is how can we learn a bit more about song structure and arrangement and this goes for everything in music the more we train our ears to critically listen and be able to deduce what's going on well then we just add to our like our our forensic arsenal so that we can listen to any type of music, any sound, and we can get inspired by that, and we can integrate it into our own into our own uh, music production process, and uh, yeah, music enjoyment, until a certain point where it becomes like a work uh, problem, and you cannot stop pick, picking things apart. But uh, it's in a long it's in a long time, I hope. <laughs> um, so first first of all, uh, I I want to talk a little bit about uh, warping, and we we talked very briefly about warping yesterday and um, and warping you can you can consider as taking the piece of audio that you can see down here in the bottom here i have my my waveform and this shows the energy intensity of the music so you can see the loudness on the left channel on top and the right channel on the bottom so we can see that this is a stereo track track that has left and right and then we go uh, from left to right uh, for the whole track and this is about a four minute long track so with warping we can we can stretch this track or we can compress the track 
And it's nice to be able to stretch and compress a full track. For example, if we're DJing, that's what we do to make sure that the two tempi, they uh, align. Otherwise, we're train wrecking. We're trying, we try to snap in, in sync. But then if one is off, it's just bad and they will not hire you in the club again. Uh, so with warping, we're able to do that. But, and this is amazing, we can do it on a individual level in the track so I could I could expand one section of this track or I could compress one section of this track if it wasn't made directly to a metronome okay so I want to show you this quite fast uh, a technique that I use to warp tracks and I've made a YouTube video that goes through all of this and it has an algorithm it has a step-by-step -step guide which will let you warp any piece of audio super fast so that you can integrate it into your DAW and make music with all of Miles Davis's nice sounds, for example, uh, as long as you don't break the law. Okay, so I have the first track loaded up here in Session View, and I'm just gonna change the tempo a little bit here, um, because this happens to be at 120 BPM, uh, the track that's made here, and my goal here is to make the program know that this track is 120 BPM. It's like if I'm jamming with my friend Merlin and I'm feeling 110 on the drums. Oh yeah, laid back. And then Merlin comes in and he's just had five cups of coffee because he's that kind of guy. And he comes in and he's ready on the keys and he plays at 150 BPM. I mean, that's gonna sound really cool for maybe two seconds and then, then I'm gonna leave or he's gonna leave or whoever plays the loudest is not gonna leave. So it's the same point here, is to make sure that every, everyone who's playing an instrument in this composition is playing uh, in the same time. Yeah. All right. So I want this, this track is not warped. You can see that warping is disengaged down here in the, in the clip view. And when I press play up here, I want to tap the tempo here to kind of get into the ballpark area of the tempo of the track. It doesn't matter if I hit it right I don't need to hit it perfectly right. I just need to be in the area of where this track is made because that's going to make it easier for me uh, down the line. And it's very important that you do this in session view because if you do it in, a, in arrangement view, it's going to change the tempo every time you tap. So it doesn't work in arrangement view. Very important. So I'm going to press play here. And I'm going to fast forward by dragging the pointer up here a bit so that we skip into where there's a beat. Yeah, and then I'm going to press tap with my mouse. Okay. Awesome. So I landed at about 121. That's okay. And I'm the kind of person who dislikes decimal figures in my tempo. So I'm going to write 121 and press enter. It's okay if you like decimal numbers. I don't. <laughs> um, and when I engage warping down here now, it's gonna it's gonna tell this track. It's gonna say that this track is at 121 BPM. Okay, that's why I was tapping the tempo in the beginning. So I press warp now, and you can see that the BPM down here, and this is the BPM for this one clip. Okay, the BPM for this one clip live now thinks is 121 BPM. Cool. So if I press play now, it's going to play in uh, at 121 BPM. So not really a change right now. Let's jump into the beat by dropping the speaker here. And if I change the tempo now, you can hear that it's slowing down. So now I'm doing a DJ thing where I'm stretching the track or compressing the track. Um, put it back to 121 and check what happens if I take warp off. If I play the track now and I change the tempo and I can turn on the metronome, you can hear that. Oh my God. Uh oh, someone's fired. This does not work. Merlin, what's happening? <laughs> All right, yeah, so this was the scenario where one is playing at one tempo and the other one is playing at a totally different tempo. Uh, cool, so let's get this back to 121 and then I'm gonna re-enable warp down here. 
okay? So the next step is I need to find the, uh, the downbeat, okay? And the downbeat is where the first time where we kind of stomp our foot, where we, we feel the rhythm and it's like, okay, yeah, now, now, now I'm feeling it. Now I know for sure that this is the rhythm, right? It's the same thing that happens when we start bobbing our heads. That's like, yeah, okay, boom, that's the downbeat. And I can see on my waveform, if I zoom in here, I can see that it's around nine. Yeah, but let's just make sure. Now I'm gonna take the metronome off. Yeah, there we go. And check it out, if I zoom in real close, you can see that this is not perfectly on bar nine. And it's not a guarantee. Sometimes we have this rubato intro that is not caring about any tempo at all. It's just like la di di la di da, and then suddenly, boom, we have the kick drum, and then we have our, our tempo going on. Okay, so beware of that. Uh, but there are ways to correct that with warping, for example. So the little arrows that you're seeing up here, uh, the, the gray triangles, right? They're called pseudo warp markers and they're suggested warp markers. And a warp marker means uh, a place where we put our finger on this rubber band. Okay, I talked a little bit about it yesterday. Imagine we have this rubber band and every time you set a warp marker, if I double click here, if I can hit it, sorry, like this, then I put my finger on the warp marker. And if, then if I double click a couple more places like this, imagine that I have now three fingers on the rubber band, then anything in between two fingers here, they're not going to move. Okay, so I can elastically move the audio like this. And, and it, sounds, it sounds great. And if I do it a lot, it sounds crazy. Uh, then it's sound design, right? And in order to get rid of these warp markers, I can just mark the time here with my mouse and I can press the delete key or the backspace key. Boom, cleaning up. So this suggests that my downbeat happens here. And the pseudo warp marker is analyzing the audio and trying to figure out when an audio event is happening. So where does a drum hit or where does a, a note start being played? So it's reading the transients here. And if I hover my mouse over this pseudo warp marker, I can right click and I can say set one, one, one here. So that means the downbeat, okay? And this, notice that this says nine up here in musical time, bar nine, and then bar nine, first, uh, first quarter, second uh, 16, right? And we don't care about those numbers, it doesn't matter. But just notice that the numbers are gonna change now. So when I right click here and say set 111, it's gonna say one right here. And that means when I start my clip, I'm gonna skip over this whole intro, right? So I'm just gonna play directly from the downbeat. And we can change that afterwards. And if I engage my, sorry, if I engage my metronome now, then I can hear how close my tapping was to, uh, to the uh, track we're listening to. So I'm gonna engage the metronome, press play. We're gonna start at a downbeat. So the first metronome hit is gonna be perfect. And then we can see if one of them is like Whoa, drifting off. So. Uh oh. <laughs> Someone sloppy and check this out. Okay, it gets real confusing with the metronome fast and it's much easier to do this visually than, uh, than with the metronome. So once I've, once I've confirmed that this is not perfect, I can now move this. Uh, if I listen without the metronome, I can kind of see what's going on here. This one is definitely a next, like the next like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay? So I can take this one now and I can, without double clicking, and this is important, uh, if, I, if I don't double click, then it's gonna change the BPM here from this warp marker here all the way for the rest of the track, okay? So if I just drag something here and I move them closer to each other, you see that it's gonna compress the whole track and the BPM down here changes. Right, and if I do it the other way, it compresses. Uh, sorry, it, uh, it it expands. Okay, so I'm gonna press Command C to undo, and check it out. Now, if I take this little pseudo warp marker here and I drag it over to the nine, you're gonna see that the tempo here is gonna change. Boom! Now it's at 
119.99. And now I can lock this by double clicking it. So everything that I do afterwards is not gonna uh, affect what's happening here. And this is really cool if you're working with something which is not made to a drum machine or in a sequencer that is not continuously 120 BPM, for example. If it's, if it's a recording you've made of you, you playing an instrument without a click track, uh, or you just want to correct a, a error or something that you did, then this is the, this is the progress or this is the, this, this is the way to, 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 to move forward. And we just do one section at the time. And another tip here is if I only wanted this section here, I don't have to warp all of this. It's just wasted work, right? If, if I'm in a hurry, uh, then I can just jump right in here, find out a downbeat. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then you win. They got progress confused with the next again, so they laugh at you, so you win. By the way, this is my friend Sean on the vocals. Big up, Sean. Uh, then I can just right click here and set, say set 111, and we can continue from here on. Oops, sorry, play clip. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then you win. They got progress confused with the next again, so they laugh at you, so you win. Want you to believe that oh, you're not in, as they laugh at you, as they sin. Keep up the pressure and you'll see that the lies are thin. No more laughter, let's begin. Ah, so this one we need to correct over here. And now I lock it, and you can hear we're back in sync now. Okay, cool. So, so this is the way to, to do warping, and I really, uh, I really encourage you to try this out on a couple of different tracks. Uh, it, it, it's really fun, and it's a super powerful tool. And I will just share with you this tutorial I did a couple of years back. Uh, so yeah, so do do check that one out, and and do practice the uh, the warping because it really makes any piece of recorded audio available for you to work with. Yes, okay, cool. So I've warped this track now. And the reason I did that, oh, sorry, I need to, I need to correct one more thing. Um, and, and that is, I want to have my intro here. I cut out my intro before, so I want to have that. But since I know my tempo is right now, I can just move this start marker back. And while I move it back, check this out over here, this section here that says start and end, it's where the clip is going to start and end if loop is not engaged, okay? If loop is engaged, as soon as it hits the loop, it's just going to keep having fun inside of that loop. So I'm going to drag this one back until it says minus 8.1.1. So I've just made sure that the track starts uh, eight bars early. So when I press play now, Now I get the whole intro. Yeah. Cool. And you can see up here that it's counting down in uh, in seconds right now. And that's because I'm not looping. If I were to set a loop, say for example, I want to loop the part that's right here. I can mark it and it's uh, four bars. I can right click and say loop selection. So now it counts down until we hit the loop. If you look at the track, and as soon as I hit the loop, it's gonna turn into a trivial pursuit cheese. Yeah. And then it counts how many uh, quarter, no, how many 16s are there. So this is four bar loop. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yes, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah. And whenever you see a cheese up here, it means that it's just gonna loop. And then if I take a uh, loop off, it's gonna continue out of the loop and it's gonna tell me however long there is until the end marker here. And the end marker is way out here. And if I don't want to, I can, I can just click here and move it, yeah. And the time is gonna change up here on the track, as you can see. And the end position here is gonna change as well. So a nice trick here is if I'm zoomed in and I want my track to end at bar 41, I don't wanna zoom out. I don't wanna zoom out to catch my, uh, my end marker. So if I hold command and shift, you can see that I can change between setting my end marker or my start marker, okay? So this is a real nifty trick. Whoop, and then it stopped. This is a real nifty trick if you uh, if you don't like zooming in and out all the time and it's great for not getting carpal tunnel syndrome and all that. Um, 
I, I only learned that like a, a year ago or something. I'm like, holy cow, why, how did I not know about this trick? It would have saved me so much mousing around. Um, yeah, cool. So um, I've got this track warp now and uh, it's playing all the way through. And the reason I've, I've been spending so much time talking about warping here is that I can now drag this into, oh, I'm gonna put my tempo back to 120 now. There we go. Oh, one more important thing. The relationship here between the clip that I'm playing, so my track down here, and the uh, project tempo that we have up here, is that any clip, any clip which has warping engaged will follow the project tempo. We don't call it master tempo, we call it project tempo, yeah? So any clip with warping on follows the project tempo, which means if this was, we've told live now that this track here, this, this clip is at 120 BPM. And I can even click the warp mark and I can write 120 BPM because I know that's what I made the track in. It's also in the name of the track. If I say uh, show in finder, you can see that I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty meticulous uh, about that. I always put in the BPM and the key uh, in case I need to rewarp a track like right before I have to go on because that happens if you delete some wrong files and all that so it's 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 a help to yourself be good with with naming all right yeah so if i change the project tempo here to 125 it actually means that this track is going to speed up the difference between the two so that's five uh, bpm okay it's going to speed up five bpm yeah awesome so i'm going to put it back to 120 and now i can grab this clip with the mouse and I'm holding it down with the mouse and you can see that I've, I've, I've catched it and I can go over here to the horizontal lines on the Ableton logo, like parts of the Ableton logo, or I could have just pressed the tab key on my keyboard to switch between the two. Okay, so different ways to do it. And now I can drop it onto the, uh, the timeline here in arrangement view. And uh, I need to re-enable the uh, I need I need to what is it called I need to go back to arrangement here sorry um, by clicking this button otherwise it's going to play the clip from session room remember our talk about quantum physics earlier that uh, we can only play one clip per track and we can only play one clip from either aspect of life so it's either from arrangement view or from session view right you're either or uh, but you can be in both places but only one yeah okay that's another talk. <laughs> Uh, cool, so I'm gonna say back to arrangement here and the track is now perfectly fit with my musical grid and that's what I wanted to do because now I'm gonna deduce the recipe of this track, right? So I already did this at home underneath here just to uh, make sure that we have it. But the way you can do this at home is that you can add a, uh, a new MIDI track in here by pressing uh, command shift T that's the keyboard, or you can go to create and say insert MIDI track. You can also see the keyboard shortcut here to most of the things that we can, uh, we can use keyboard shortcuts for. And I highly recommend that you learn the keyboard shortcuts. It's just like practicing your instrument. It's, it's muscle memory and it's part of using a, uh, a computer music studio. Okay, cool. So the point here is to kind of like reverse engineer the uh, the song structure of this track and i can just start playing the track over here i'm going to turn it down a little bit and while i do that i can mark a selection here right click and say insert empty midi clip command shift m okay so this inserts a uh, empty midi clip and once i've become good at reading waveforms i can see where things are happening you can see there's a small dip in the waveform here so probably something's going to happen here okay and I, this is also part of working with computer music. It's, it's being able to read the waveforms. Yeah? Cool. So let's play from the beginning here. And this is an intro. So I'm going to rename and call this intro. Cool. Let me know in the chat if, uh, if you can hear my voice on top of the beat. It's, if it's okay. All right. And I can actually just drag and then hold option so you see it becomes a plus now it's going to drop a copy and i can extend this for a bit and we can call this breaks yeah and i'm going to give it another color just to show that it's it's not our intro 
Okay, so something happened there. Let me just check the chat. Volume good. Thank you, Maxio. Awesome. And I can extend this uh, break section for however long of an intro I've made here. So this is a semi-DJ friendly track in the beginning. So it has a, a fairly long intro uh, with the beat on, okay? So we have something without a beat that you can mix into. And as a DJ, I would probably loop this and then drop into this when the beat of another track would go out and then this beat would catch on. Oh, okay, and this continues, so I'm just gonna extend it. And I only care about the colors and, uh, and the names here. I don't care about how long the loop is. And I'm zooming in a bit. So I'm giving this a shade of gray because it's it's breaks, but it's different breaks than from before. Okay, so there's it's breaks within a variation. Yeah, this track is gonna be available soon. Actually, it's my production. Cool. So if you're into this kind of music, definitely stay tuned. And we could call this maybe a pre-chorus. Let's listen to what happens. Ah, oh, weird sound design. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then you win. Okay, and then we have something with they vocals on here. With the next kin, so they laugh at you, so you win. Let's call that verse. Want you to believe that you're not in as they laugh at you as they sin. Keep up the pressure and you'll see that the lies are thin. No more laughter, let's begin. Yeah, that's operator doing that gnarly. <laughs> Okay, and then something happened here. Okay, there was a change. I don't know what to call it, but let's say uh, less breaks, more sound design. It's just to visually see that there's a difference between this section and the other section. Cool, and I'm gonna copy this verse over here. Living is bliss, swallow the wind, give a chill or kick on. Oh, yeah, yeah, it, it had, had to, to be, be said. said. Otherwise, Otherwise, you might turn up dead. dead. Truthful words, spark lightning in their eyes. They find the truth fighting in promising demise. Everyone agrees that it don't make sense. The reign of the greedy got the whole world tense. Taking something but nothing makes the people repent. Reign and autism is the beginning at the end. Whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah, all fresh cats are break beats here with Sean. Okay. I hope you can take all the all the, the shameless or shameful uh, self-promotion here. But I thought it was cool to take one of my tracks to show you what a uh, like what a song structure from from my perspective looks like. And uh, you can do this at home. Uh, it, it's really cool to visually be able to see what's uh, what's happening here. And uh, and the thing is, like, if you do this on, I would say, like commercial tracks, but but who really cares? But tracks that are available online in a music store, let's call it that. Um, we can do the same thing, and I and I did this for uh, for more of a, a, a um, what should we call it, uh, like classical DJ uh, track, right? So like this, and it's in Danish down here. I hope you can bear with me, but it says like long DJ friendly intro, right? And this one just it just continues. Small additions on the sound design, and if you wanted to go into the nitty gritty parts here then uh, you could also take note on that. You could be like, every time there's a change, you'd say, you can split the clip here, Command E, and and here, and we could say like, uh, white noise added, or something like that. 
And it's a really good way to notice how much change is actually happening in a track. And it's subtle changes. Most of the time it's subtle, subtle changes until the point where we really want to introduce a change. And that's usually where we go from, say, the chorus into the verse or from the A part into the B part or from a drop into a break. It doesn't matter what you call it. It's just a change of pace. Yeah. Cool. And this just keeps on going, right? Hi-hats on. Here's a breakdown. And then that moves into the, it says A part with synthesizer atmosphere uh, building up so let's just hear what that sounds like and this uh, this uh, track here is 126 bpm right i warp this to be 126 bpm and i right click and i said warp from here and ableton just got this one right so you can try to do uh, auto warping sometimes it gets it right and that's nice you've saved yourself five minutes uh, or two minutes once you've practiced so this track is playing at 120 BPM, so 6 BPM slower than its original tempo. Yeah, so this is just another another recipe. And then over here, totally different genre. Kruder Dorfmeister, big, big, big up, very nice music. You can see we have an intro and an intro plus some vocals. And this track was originally at 80 BPM, so let me just take it down to 80 BPM. There we go the project tempo and then we have the a part yeah and we have a a part with a lot of different changes here that i've i've noted down and we have a bridge and keys and we have a break and more like drum and bass uh, heavy heavy part variation where they add in some more drums i think and an a part Anyways, like you get the point. The thing is just take your tracks, warp them, look at the video I shared, practice it. You'll be super fast uh, with this and you will get it right 100% of the time. Live only gets it right some of the time. It's, it's pretty good, but you can do it much faster and, and it's a good practice. And then these uh, recipes here, you can save if you drag them into your audio library. So if I open up my browser and I go into my my music folder here under places i've just added in my own music folder here which is in my google drive so you can see google drive music ableton and then my my rk things um, then in here i have one called arrangements and these are just different ableton live sets that i've saved um, in here and i can recall this if i go into arrangement here so you can see that this is the this is the same uh, structure, right? Arra arrangements, RK things, arrangement, arrangement project. Um, then I can load in these arrangement and I can very easily just copy this one over and leave the MIDI, uh, the MIDI part on top. Yeah, so I would just take this track, uh, which is called Lo Lounge Recipe, go into my arrangement here, Lounge Recipe and drag it over. And it's gonna save it here, Lounge Recipe, Crude Dorfmeister. Cool. So I'm actually now gonna say this is Kata uh, Gone uh, Upskrift, Danish for recipe. And I want to save this into my arrangement. There we go. And now I can just recall this recipe if I want to. And then the point is that I will take this MIDI and I'm gonna extend it a bit. I'm gonna take this MIDI and I'm gonna copy it, Command C. And now I can move over. Let's add a bit of silence here, 128 bars, just to move everything over. So I could take this recipe and copy it in on, uh, on the top of my uh, project here and make the clip a little bit small. And now it's actually, I have, I have a recipe for, uh, for what I need to do now. Yeah, ah, okay, so I just need to fill in the blanks, all right? Um, that's one way to do it. And uh, maybe you like it, maybe you don't, doesn't matter, now you know. But try it out and, uh, and try to get familiar with these different types of, uh, of arrangements. And you can also look on, um, oh, there's a zoom bar in the way here. You can look on, uh, on Wikipedia here. Uh, it ha they have a pretty good article on, uh, on song arrangement. And, and they will describe like what is the, the verse chorus relationship. And this one actually has its own um, little Wikipedia article as well with a couple of example tracks that you can check out. 
and, and they will talk about things like the middle eight or the bridge, if this is something new to you, uh, the terminology in here. And they will say, well, you can listen to Country Roads, which has a bridge, or you can listen to uh, The Sunshine of My Life, which doesn't have one. So, yeah, there's plenty of, uh, of, of options to, to educate yourself. Yeah. And there's a lot of great YouTube videos on, on this stuff as well. But now you know the basics and now you know how to deconstruct uh, a, a track. All right. Uh, awesome. Uh, let's see, how are we doing on the Q&A, Merlin? Anything we need to, uh, to touch on before we move on? All good, all clear at the moment. But uh, yeah, keep the questions coming if you've got anything for Raz. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so um, yeah, let's, uh, let's rewind to, to where we took off from yesterday. So what we did yesterday, let me stop here and unsolo everything. And I'm going to take uh, these other recipes and just delete these tracks. I don't need them anymore. Uh, so now I have, I just have, let's make this small here. I'll call this my, uh, my recipe track. Recipe, yeah. All right, out here. And um, oh, my Q&A section moved. Sorry, it's, I just need to get Zoom back to like the application. I can't really see the Q&A. There we go. Okay, cool. Yeah. Apologies. All right. So this is where we took off. From. Oh, I turned the tempo down to 80. <laughs> That's why everything sounds so 80s. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put it back to 120. Yeah, okay, there we go. So there's a recording of my uh, harmonica uh, with a bunch of effects. There's a beat. There's uh, this uh, arpeggio. And then there's some uh, chords. And we have uh, this uh, atmosphere, which we resampled like crazy with the hybrid reverb. Wow, that, that, was, a, that was a nice, good experiment. And then we, uh, we have a group here. And I didn't show that. I'm sorry. I, I had to work a little bit more on this because I was, I was feeling it. Uh, so, so what the last thing we did was uh, we talked a little bit about warping. And I, I cut out this little, uh, this little section right here, which uh, it sounds like this. Just this, right? I took this and, and I moved it over into session view, right here. So it's this, it's this clip right here and, we, and I warped it and changed the rhythm of it. And then we duplicated the tracks and this is playing the, the regular one. And then this is playing an octave below. So together, this is the first one. And I also added a sidechain compressor and I'll show you how to, uh, how to do that uh, afterwards. So we'll just uh, we'll take off all these effects for now. I'll, I'm gonna get back to this. So this is the clip, and then we added in the one and octave below, and I panned them a little bit to the side, just to make sure they're not playing on top of each other too much. And then this last clip here is playing an octave above. So we have the regular one, an octave below, and one an octave above, and then this is playing in reverse. Yeah, man, everything just sounds great in reverse or satanic. <laughs> okay, cool. So this actually ended up being a cool atmosphere and we could use this either for an intro or for an outro or we can use it for a breakdown. I mean, it's cool. It's, it's part of what we already created with the uh, Kalimba track. And, and I really, it, it's, it's, it's a way that I've found myself Composing a lot is uh, we, we throw out some ideas, we take the best parts of it, we refine that, and then we can always, it's like zooming in, right? We can go to a next level and we can refine that idea and we, we just make a composition out of this, this, this one refined good idea and we can patchwork things out from that. 
Um, and if we do it in that way, usually it also sounds like it's it's a cohesive thing, right? Because we took that idea from one place and used it in another place. Just like resampling the uh, the hybrid reverb here with the impulse response of the kalimba. Yeah. And it's also a little bit touching on the subject of how to make MIDI music not sound so MIDI is to keep refining the audio that you have and, and resampling and, and using the effects. And we'll talk a, a bit more about that down the line. Otherwise, just please remind me, okay? Because I think it's an, an important topic, the, the, the quality and timbre of the sound. Okay, so these three tracks I grouped, okay? So I just selected them and I right clicked and I said group tracks, okay? And that put them in this group, which was called uh, something like that, you know, seven audio. Um, and I called it the hashtag to give it the, uh, the track number here, hashtag. And I called it Kalimba, we could call it group or bus or whatever you, whatever you want, or just Kalimba, Kalimbas, because it's plural now, right? Um, so all the audio from these three tracks, if I open up the input and output section here, you can see that all of these, they say audio two, the seven kalimba, right? So this is the group. If I call this one group here, you can say that it says audio to group. Kalimba group. All right. So now, and now I know exactly what's going on. So they're sending all their audio to this group right here. And, and I, I think I changed the preset on one of them. No, I didn't. But, you know, just for fun, let's try to change one of these presets that I made yesterday. So this is uh, an octave above. So maybe let's give the, high, the low pass filter here. Let's open it up a bit. You can see it's this one. Um, I'm cutting away the high frequencies, which are to the right side of this little ball. Yeah, so let's leave it like that. And, and one important thing here, when we talk about the quality of sound or the timbre of sound, is that no one sound that you hear in the non-computer world is the same. It's just, it's not. <laughs> so we're always used to hearing sounds with a bit of change, okay? But a computer is really good at repeating something without a change. So it's up to us as producers, as composers, to make sure that there's change on almost everything that we have. And when we start employing uh, this uh, mindset, it's, it's just second nature to us to make sure that there's movement in our sounds, okay? It, it's not just a pad that needs to move, it's everything that needs to move, just a little bit, right? And we can use LFOs and envelopes for this, okay? And the LFO here, it's something that just changes very slowly between one thing and another thing, okay? It's called a low frequency oscillator and something that oscillates goes between two extremes, right? A maximum and a minimum, okay? And it's actually what you can see on the chorus ensemble here. So that would be an example of, a, of, of two oscillators here running next to each other. It's like two dolphins, like woo, or a disco dancer. Um, so what happens when I add the amount here on the envelope, which goes like a sine wave here, you could also choose something else, is that it's very slowly gonna move the filter frequency here at the speed that I've set down here. So at uh, 0.11 second, it's gonna go up and down, okay? So uh, that's, um, that's not a long time. If it said one hertz here, then it would be one time every second. So that would be a lot faster, right? So what it's actually doing is just moving like this. And if I take it off and we just listen to what happens when I do this movement. Listen to this noise layer come in and out. Let me turn up the volume for a bit so you can really hear it. And now I'm moving away from just having subtle movements into more like sound design, is that we're gonna have this like fade in, okay? But the point here is to just have very subtle movement. And now I'm gonna let the LFO do it. And the amount controls how, how far away it should go from where I set the, the value here, okay? So we have the hiss now, and it goes away. 
And let me put the amount all the way up. Haha, there you see, I've just saved myself all the work for having to sit and dial this knob up and down, up and down, up and down. And it might sound simple. And to those of you who are already familiar with LFOs and, and modulation, this is called modulation because we're modulating a parameter in the auto filter device, right? If you're not using this on almost all of your tracks, uh, then I would try to suggest that you do that, okay? And to those of you who are new with, uh, with modulation here, start doing it right now. It's, it's really gonna change the, the characters of your sounds. And then another nifty trick is to add some kind of spatial effect after this, okay? So what happens here is the audio passes from left to right here, okay? So it goes into the tuner, it's the recorded clip here. And this plays into the tuner, it goes into my equalizer here. And the equalizer here is taking out all the low frequencies of the recording. And it's doing that with a low cut filter here. So I can expand this on the arrow and remember what I said yesterday. Every time you see an arrow, click it. Don't just follow it, click it, okay? Uh, if I play this now, I can visually see that I have all this junk information down here that I don't need. It's just air hitting the membrane of the microphone. So if I turn this up, I'm not changing the, uh, I'm not, I'm not taking anything away from the actual part of the sound, which is nice. I'm just taking away all the junk. It's like, a, it's like someone chiseling at a big stone, uh, like a big uh, block of stone. If you don't chisel away all the stuff that's not supposed to be there, then we can't really see or hear what's going on, right? Again, it's a good, it's a good uh, analogy to, to, to think about when you're EQing and, and working on your sounds is just take away all, everything that's not supposed to be there because each of these sounds, they all add up together. And when they add up together with the junk inside, it's gonna sound crap on big speakers, okay? It's gonna sound muddy. And if we clean out all the crap like this, or sorry, the, the stuff that's not supposed to be there, and we add this modulation, subtle modulation on all of the tracks, then it's gonna feel so much alive. Okay, trust me on this one, it's, it, it really will. Um, so this is what my EQ here is doing. And I could call this reductive, reductive EQ, okay? I'm just renaming the device here. Uh, with the command R option, right? And then we have the actual instrument, or sorry, we have the uh, the uh, audio effect rack that I built for my kalimba here. And this is this is more where I do the sound design for um, for my device. Okay, so I'm I'm tweaking all the sounds here that comes from the recording, and then I have this last part that's modulating the the high frequencies. It's cutting away the high frequencies, which is then being sent into the reverb and that makes sure that whenever I do a movement it's gonna it's gonna slowly fade out the movement because it's going into a reverb and uh, all sounds should have a home like all sounds should have a reverb uh, no homeless sounds okay it's only in the computer world again if we talk about MIDI sounding like MIDI it does that because lack of modulation lack of reverb Okay, no sounds in the real world that we hear. Anywhere you're sitting right now, if you take off your headphones and you do a clap, it's gonna sound like your room, okay? So we're used to hearing ourselves in a physical space that has a certain character of the room. Yeah, that's what we missed about on the drums with the impulse response, that we actually took a, a one, one room, which was the recording of the... Uh, <laughs> It was the recording of my kalimba and we put our um, our drums into that room, okay? And this is also why when we do recordings, we usually want to have the recording super clean. So the closer I get to the mic, the, the less you hear of the room, the more you hear of me. It's just like someone whispering into your ear. And why we do that is so that we can put it into any room, okay? But if we don't do it, it's just gonna sound like a someone's playing the kalimba inside my ear. Whew. Okay. Yeah, so I hope that clears a little bit up some of the uh, techniques that we can uh, think about when, uh, when, when we're sound designing and mixing. Okay, cool. 
Um, and I'm a huge fan of this, like cutting something out and having a reverb or delay at the end of it. All right, so this is in a group now. And what I did with this group, I can solo the whole group if I press the solo key here, is I added a glue compressor. And the point here is that I want to, uh, I'm playing three different kalimbas now, and they're not all playing at the same time, okay? So I want to add this glue compressor to make sure that the sounds, when two of them hit at the same time, boom, like these two right here, the sound is gonna be louder than when they're not playing at the same time. And if I use a compressor, when it, and whenever two hits are hitting at the same time, it's just gonna make sure that ah, it's not gonna sound as loud. And I can do that, you can copy this preset. It's a very slow moving compressor. Uh, based after the settings of the SSL compressor. And I just wanted to move a little bit all the time. And you can see whenever these two, eight and nine, are hitting at the same time, the arrow is bouncing up, okay? And then afterwards, I added in a saturator to uh, distort a little bit. And I want to distort all three kalimbas at the same time, okay? So I could have just added saturation on each of these tracks, which I also did. I added a little bit of drive down here uh, in the auto filter. If you change the algorithm here, you uh, you get this drive button. And uh, and I kind of like this PRD. One, you can like MS2 is probably modeled after the MS20. Uh, you can read more about that in the manual. Um, but the nice thing here is that if you saturate a group, then we're going to saturate all the sounds together. It's kind of like using the blur effect if we're working on pictures, right? So if you have one picture on top of another picture, you can see the edge is super sharp. And if we use blur, it's like, ah, oh, okay, I'm not, it's like watching the news in HD, like when they switch from the non HD signals to HD, suddenly everyone just looked like, what is going on? Because we're used to this blur uh, between the layers. So this is blurring up the frequencies. So this is controlling the dynamics, making sure that nothing sticks out too much. After I've cleaned up each of the kalimbas here with the reductive EQ, yeah? Then here I kind of make them play more together with the uh, glue compressor. Then I saturate to add a bit of blur between the frequencies. And then I EQ again, because every time I saturate, I'm adding complexity. Okay, I'm generating more, uh, more frequencies than are already there. So I'm adding complexity. And this is another way I like to think about working with music is we can add complexity or we can remove complexity. Okay, so whenever I add complexity with a saturator, I always add an EQ afterwards to make sure like, hey, what's going on here? What happened? What is this uh, saturator actually doing? And what I did here is I added in another low cut. So let's take them one at a time, uh, three and four and seven, okay. So again, you can see there's this junk. I can double click the visualizer here to get it uh, to be big. So I added in this low cut again to, ooh, to make room for my kick and my sub bass. And then I dipped it a little bit at around 300 Hertz because both both uh, eight and nine here are playing a lot of, um, of uh, material at, at about 300. So just dialing back a little bit here, leaves space for the other instruments. And then there's this, uh, the backwards. This one, I took that back a little bit as well. And then I use number seven, which is a um, high shelf. And this is the same one you see on your, your home stereo. So when you see like treble and you can boost that, that's that's the fork here or the bass one, right? So this is going to lift uh, everything from the cutoff point here, six kilohertz, right? So it's going to take all frequencies and move them up or down. And what I did here is I emphasized some of the, the noise, right? That's, it's not a perfect recording. And I love that. I love that there's noise in this recording because we're also used to noise around us, right? So use noise, be in control of the noise. It's a super powerful uh, way to, to, to catch your uh, listener's attention by either adding it in or suddenly removing it. Uh, Anna Strandemüller is, a, is a, like a genius working with noise like this. If you really listen to his tracks, it's amazing. 
Okay, so this is... You can really hear how the noise from the LFOs now are coming in and out. That's what I'm, I'm emphasizing with this one, okay? And then at the end, I added this, uh, it's just a compressor, right? It's a, it's a compressor that I renamed. So it's called Compressor Normally, but I renamed it to Kick Docker. And then what I did is I opened up the arrow here. Every time you see an arrow, click it. So I opened up the arrow and I, and I engaged the sidechain uh, function here. And the sidechain means that the compressor is going to listen to my track six here. And track six is uh, my drums. If I just solo my drums as well. Right? So I take audio from track six. And then in here underneath, I can select all of the pads in the drum kit. And this looks like crazy. I don't, I don't even want to read all of this. It just stresses me out. <laughs> so what I do is I look at the waveforms here on the left. Check out the waveforms when I start playing. We can take the whole kit, which means that the compressor is going to listen to the, uh, the snare and the kick. Or I can just find here, kick, and I can say post mixer. And I can see the waveform every time the kick hits. And then now when I take down the threshold, try to look at the waveform here on 7 and listen to what's happening here. So this is too much, right? Now it's it's a, it's a sound design effect, right? It's not mixing, but but just subtly like this. And this is mostly audible uh, again with the high frequencies and the noise. Cool. Um, so um, so now I'm adding movement with the LFOs, and then I'm adding like inter-track movement with the compressor. So every time a kick hits, uh, my kalimba is just backing, backing, uh, backing off a little bit. And, and adding in these things, again, will create uh, more movement in your sound. And the cool thing about selecting post mixer here and not post effects is that when my kick is not playing, so check this out. If I'm, if I'm playing my, my composition here, uh, my group, I can, I can fold in the group here. Uh, I can also use the key, uh, the U key on my keyboard uh, to open and close the group. Really nice. Um, if I play these two now, and I turn off, if I turn off my drums here, if we look at the compressor here, and I turn off the drums, then you see it's not. Oh, sorry. If I turn down the volume here. No, what's happening? I'm messing up. If I stop the clip. <laughs> okay, that's messing me up. I, it should be... Uh... Ah, no! Okay, it has to be post mixer for the whole track. I'm sorry about that. I remember <laughs> I remembered wrong. So in order to do this, we need to select post mixer for the whole track. Uh, and then we need to use the EQ here to only, uh, only find the kick drum. So when I turn it off now, yes. Okay, there we go. <laughs> sorry about that, I remembered wrong. Okay, cool. So this, dick, uh, sorry, this kick ducker, I copied. Uh, and I put it onto the atmosphere track as well. So it's here in the end. It's just the same one that I copied. Um, so these two together now sound like this. And I took down the threshold even more. And then I added an auto filter again with um, modulation on the, um, on the filter. And let's try to just take this off. And this one is using another shape. It's using noise here. And it has a very high resonance. So this again creates a bit of movement. And I'm not going to go more in depth with this, but you can copy these settings if you want uh, and try it out and just listen to what it does with, with your audio. And then I'm also adding auto pan to make it move a little bit from side to side randomly. And I think hopefully you should be able to hear that on the, uh, on the earphones. Okay, cool. 
All right, very long talk about getting your sounds right, but I think it's just as important as arranging things is having a, having a soundscape that you're comfortable and happy about. Yeah, and, and arranging from here actually shouldn't take that long to get a, a general idea down. And I'm not gonna follow my recipe now, but try this at home. But what I'm gonna do instead is the way I usually do it. And it's, maybe it's a little bit unconventional, I don't know, but, but for me it works. Um, what I do here is I have my I have my sketch, and my sketch here has uh, all of uh, all of my material playing at, at once. So if we consider this a hundred percent, this is like full complexity, right? And it's too much when everything is playing right now. If I on if I uh, if I unmute these ones, and we go into the loop, it's too much, right? But it's okay, because what I want to do now is, is reductive arrangement, okay? So I'm going to copy this out. With I select the whole range. Let me do that again. I select the whole range. Here I just clicked one clip, which is all 16 bars. And then I use this function that we did, uh, that we also used yesterday, which was um, duplicate, but duplicate time, okay? So it's in the edit menu, and it's down here, duplicate time. So we're taking the piece of uh, audio or, or we have the piece of information that we have here and we're going to add it in and push everything here over, right? Otherwise, if I just did duplicate, it's going to overwrite. So I select these 16 bars now and I can see it down in the bottom of the screen. I have 16 bars and then I'm going to press Command Shift D and now it pushes everything over. And now I want to loop both of these sections, right? And now I want to create either a longer passage of uh, a part or the verse part or the chorus part, right? But just my first part. Or maybe I end up doing a little version of the a part and a little version of the b part or one section or the other section, okay? And one way I like to do this is just by deactivating clips. So I can deactivate a clip by pressing the zero key on my keyboard. So for example, let's start with uh, with a little bit less dramatic things here. So I can solo my Verlitzer track here by uh, clicking on it and pressing the S key as long as David Guetta's keyboard here is deactivated. So, ah uh, yeah, here I also added uh, a delay and the dynamic tube effect, which is amazing. Um, and again, you can copy over these settings if you want. But this one is, um, it's a bit different than the chords. Oh, I also added the kick docker here, cool. So already now I know that this, these two are not gonna play at the same time, okay? So I'm gonna uh, deactivate this clip. And the reason I'm deactivating them and not just deleting them like this is that I can, al I can always reactivate it. So now I'm just jamming out an idea, okay? So let's listen to all of this together without. Okay, first of all, I want to copy these three clips in. So I'm gonna call this Kalimba, I'm, uh, I'm gonna call this short loop. And this is the original one. And then I'm gonna press the tab key to move over to rename the next one. And this is gonna be short loop uh, minus 12, cause it's uh, 12 semitones, one octave below. And then the last one, which is short loop, Rev, it's reverse, plus 12, okay? So in this way, I, uh, I know what's what, okay? And I can select the first one, hold shift, select the last one. So I'm selecting the range of clips now, and I'm gonna grab these with the mouse, and now I need to drop them on the kalimba tracks. So that's down here. Yeah, so now these are here, and I'm gonna select all three of them, and I can drag them out for the whole 16 bars, okay? And now I can re, sorry, back to arrangement for the whole group up here. Otherwise I would have to do it for each of these. Yeah, but now I'm gonna do it for all of them. So now I'm, I'm, everything is playing now from, um, everything is playing now from uh, uh, arrangement view. Oh, sorry. There we go, push wants to record. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, there we go. Back to arrangement. Awesome. Um, and I think for uh, maybe for an intro or for this part, I, I don't want the drums to happen. So I'm going to take out the drums uh, for the first eight bars and let's just try to do something a little bit subtle in the beginning. I'll turn down the harmonica a bit, even though it sounds pretty nice. <laughs> Okay, I, I kind of like this. And this could actually work as an intro. So I'm just going to select the first eight bars. And again, I'm going to do duplicate time here. And then I can, I, can, I can thin out the intro even more. So this could be uh, uh, a part now. And I'm going to move this over till here. So now I'm, I'm changing my, uh, my recipe up here uh, so that it's going to match somewhat <laughs> along the line. Uh, so let's listen to the intro now, and let's try to let's try to deactivate the harmonica here. Let's just try to deactivate the first part. And let's thin it thin out a little bit more. Let's let's shorten these two and just start with the reverse one. Oh, and check out how much presence this takes if I take it off. Ah. And then we had the lead in from the harmonica. I kind of like that. There was this, it was a guess, but I kind of like that. Um, so let's just check out what, what happens with this. Uh, maybe we need to, maybe we need to save a little bit of, of this audio for later. Okay. So think about again, before I took everything in the composition, 100%, right? And if I serve 100% at the beginning, there's not going to be any surprises left. The only thing I can do is like back, back things off. So save your S's, like save your, uh, save your awesome, but do serve a little bit, a little bit of it down the line to, to keep engaging uh, your listener. Okay. So let's just see what happens here. Okay. Let's try to take out, uh, the this part of the bright one um. yeah oh i'm kind of feeling that the kick should hit here okay so i'm gonna drag drag back drag back my kick yeah <laughs> okay cool let's hear this transition again Okay, I like this part. Let's 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 refine this. Okay, I don't want to go into the next part already. So this is like a a, a call and response or a back or forth or a part b part uh, between my harmonica, right? We have one version here. We have the other version here. And if I serve the second version already, it's used. Okay, so I want I want to save that. We can't just eat dessert for all three courses. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna take this section now and I'm gonna duplicate time again. So I'm just kind of refining little pe bits and pieces and then pushing the rest uh, over until I'm ready for that. So let's try to look at this. And already now I can see that I don't want to serve all three of these loops now. So we've listened to this and, and uh, this is so great with having uh, different colored clips. Uh, here I can recolor them. Is that I can visually see that, oh my goodness, I'm serving all three dishes here at the same time, right? So I can take out this one we've been listening to for eight bars. So I'm just going to tell this to back off, maybe like so. Or I could keep doing the deactivate here, right? And then I served this one here and it took a break and I'm serving it again. So maybe let's do a like one on one off like this. And then we'll have the other one do it opposite. Okay. And I'm just arranging by what geometry or something like that, right? I'm just thinking like what's on, what's off, what's call, what's response for each of the parts. Okay, so let's listen to, let's listen to this.
Okay, okay, nice. Uh, we're getting there. Uh, again, I could also I could also take out bits and pieces here. We could do this like uh, on and off thing uh, with this, or let's try something fun. Let's let's try to take this off all the way here, and then I'm gonna select these and do the split. Okay, again, so I'm chopping these two into different clips now. Let's recolor them, right? So what I want to do here is I want to I want to use the warp engine to to make it play in half speed. Okay, and if I double click the clip uh, down here, you see that I can say uh, divided by two or multiplied by two. And pop quiz, hot shots out there. If I want this clip to play half the tempo. Should I say that the clip is born in twice the tempo or in half the tempo? Remember that any clip which has warp engaged up here will follow the project tempo. So either I can say that this one is born at 60 BPM or at 240. And I don't know if anyone responded in the chat. Uh, but what I want to do here is I want to double the BPM here because then it's going to slow down to 120. And you can see it on the waveform. Check out the waveform here. If I if I explode this up with the C key, if I do uh, this is regular tempo, this is double speed, so half tempo for the clip and so forth. Okay, but it's a good way to understanding how clips work together with the project tempo. So I'm going to do the same thing here, and let's try to hear how this sounds. So I'm gonna listen to it going into this section now. So I'm gonna start a little bit back. Yes. Okay, let's just hear how this sounds. I'm just gonna solo out these two. This is a pretty happy, happy accident, right? I like that again I'm just I'm just like brewing coffee on the same uh, <laughs> on the same uh, leaf or whatever you call it um, but it's nice it's it's just these small variations that keep the thing keeps the thing uh, being interesting and what I'm feeling right now is a little bit of a breakdown before we move into the second part here and I can do a breakdown either again by copying or duplicating time or I want to show you another feature here which is um, insert silence okay and it's command i and it's going to insert silence from where you put the uh, the time marker here so i'm going to do command i and the program now asks me how many bars how many beats and how many 16ths and let's try to do a two bar we can always make it shorter okay so i'm going to add two bars of silence right now and this is not going to work just like this Okay, and uh, what could we do here? Let's try to sound design just a little bit. So I'm going to copy this part here. I'm just going to use the regular duplicate now. So duplicate this over, and then I'm going to press the R key, which is going to reverse the audio directly, just like that. Wow, amazing. Otherwise, I'd have to double click and go in here and press reverse. Ah, I can just press R right now, um, which is awesome. And then I'm going to do another insanely awesome thing here which is uh, I'm gonna move the play marker here uh, the start marker okay so you can see when I move the start marker here the clip is gonna the content of the clip is gonna move okay and it's so tedious to do it down here because what I want is actually something like that like I want it to align like this goblet and this goblet uh, I want I want these two to uh, to be aligned right because what we've been hearing so far are these two with uh, with with one one beat in between first this one place then this one place so it's kind of chasing the other one so i want to break that pattern a bit right you can add complexity you can take complexity off or you can move it over to create change right so the function i want here is that i can hold uh it's uh, it, it's all option alt and shift on the uh, on the mac it's something else on pc sorry i can't remember and the marker now turns into this hand and when I click the clip, check this out. Oh, I can move the content of the clip directly in the clip. 
And this just saves me so much thinking work where like, where would I have to put this? It's like something like there, like, oh my God, I don't even care. Um, but now they're perfectly aligned and they're doing it to the grid. And if I wanted to do it off grid while I'm holding option and shift, I could just press command and you can see smooth operator here doesn't care about the grid. Yeah, but I do. I wanted to start here and then I want to this little part here is not part of the loop. OK, you can kind of see that it's, it's not it's not in there. So either I could uh, open up here and uh, and change the loop. Sorry, I could change the loop over here to to take the beginning um, of the clip like that. And then I have to move it over again almost. Uh, but I would rather want to do the I'm going to undo to go back. What I want to do instead is I want to use the warping uh, functionality in here, but directly on arrangement view. So if I if I cut out this part here, you don't need to c to cut it out. It's just easier to do it like that. Um, then while I'm hovering up here where I would normally sh uh, shorten or increase the loop, if I hold shift, this arrow comes up and I'm going to stretch the clip. OK, and that's going to change the timbre of the clip a bit. Oh, and then I need to let go of the mouse first. So let's just hear this if I solo these two and I'm marking both tracks like this. I'm pressing the S key to just solo these two. And this, ah, I like this. I'm going to clip here and then I'm going to extend this one as well. Almost all the way. Let's hear how this sounds. Oh, that was too long. Something like that. Okay. Cool. Um, oh, oops. I zoomed out way too long. So let's hear how this sounds. And then we need to hit hard here. Like this is where we'd probably add something from our drums in. So I'm going to my drum clip here and then I, I muted all the hi-hats here. I deactivated all the hi-hats. So it's the, this sound. And I can select all the hi-hats by clicking the key here. Right, so I select all the hi-hats and I press the zero key to uh, reactivate it. And you can see here that uh, the hi-hats, they come in on the uh, MIDI information view right here. And maybe we take out the chords for this part. I'm going to deactivate that. And let's also take out the noise layer here, right? This one. And that's going to probably make it so that you listen in a different way. Let's hear the transition. Okay, I'm really missing the impact here. Like something super dramatic needs to happen here. So this first kick, definitely. Ah, okay, we're also starting halfway in the in the clip with the kick, so I need to move it over to start in the in the beginning here. So we could just move it boop, 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 like that, where I'm moving the uh, the content of the clip. Maybe we back, we back these two off because we've been listening to those all the time. And maybe the reverse one here. Let's put this down to uh, like not an octave above, but down, down low to make a difference on this one. Again, I'm changing the complexity here. So. And then we'll take a break again at the end here. And then now I'm tired of the harmonica, right? Now I need to add in this change. We've been listening to uh, almost, we've been listening to 34 bars, okay? So I'm gonna duplicate over to this section so that I'd have it uh, as the next one up again. And then I'm gonna do changes on this one, okay? So I'm selecting all of this and then duplicating time. And then now I can go in here and do changes. So let's start by taking off the harmonica. 
And just for kicks, I want to add in just a tad of the harmonica, okay? So I'm just deactivating everything uh, except these little parts that lead up to, this is after four bars, no, eight bars, and then again after eight bars, and then we have this other part that I just duplicated over. Awesome. So now we're working on the B part up here. I like that. And I'm going to copy that one over so it's also the B part. And here we probably want to change the, the drums. And here is the new kalimba coming in, right? You all, you probably forgot that. I forgot that. But we have another kalimba coming in here. And I want to give some space to that uh, so we can really uh, enjoy that something is going to happen here. And actually, let's save this other kalimba till later. I need a kalimba break. We all do at a certain point. Uh, and here I, t I muted out this part, so I'm going to delete that. So I'm not accidentally um, taking it back in. Okay, so I need to look. It's there. So I'm selecting all of this and deactivating it. And now we have a kalimba free se section. Or maybe we need a... Something without a beat here. Ah, this is the moment where you look, uh, you look your friend deep in the eye and just tell the person that we're gonna go through all of this corona as long as we take care of each other and be honest and all that. And let's leave a little bit of room. No, we definitely leave the piano here. Oh, yes. These small lead-ins, they're just so nice that we don't forget about the harmonica. <laughs> and this section, I want, to, I want to expand that before we move back into this one. So I'm again selecting all of this and duplicating over. And mm, what could we do here? I'm not sure if we should add in the drums again. So we're getting to a point here where we probably need to pull back a bit and, and listen to, to how we move through the different sections. We're gonna do that in a bit because I need to wrap this up. Um, so let's just listen to what's going on here. And I'm gonna try to do a little bit of change with the piano uh, while, we're, while we're at it because we've been listening to the same piano piece three times here and then again, okay? What if we take it down an octave? So I'm gonna go into this clip, change the color, Command A and select everything and hold Shift and press arrow down. Okay, yeah. And then what I'm gonna do is gonna take out the, the lowest part here. So I'm selecting all the lowest notes here by, by selecting the pitches and I'm gonna deactivate them. Yeah, because we're playing very low. Uh, let's hear this chord. Oh, that's beautiful. That's totally fine. Nice. But if I add in this 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 lowest part, ah, it's it's actually okay. Okay, so what I'll do instead is select all of this, and then I'm just gonna take down the velocity by holding the uh, the command key, and then I'm gonna drag this down. So they're gonna be real. Uh, real soft-ish. And then I'm also gonna hold Command and Shift and then just make them uh, much shorter. And actually, I'm gonna hold Shift and just make them super short, all of them. And then I'm gonna make them the same length, just tiny like toot tats on the, <laughs> on the, on the bass key. Ah, that's great. Merlin, you're my friend. I'm talking to you right now. I love you, man. Thank you for participating in this uh, in this little session here. And uh, you as well, Antoine, man. I'm happy that we're doing these things. We're keeping the, the arts and culture alive. I'm going to move over these drum hits. I was missing those. Uh, there we go. Yeah, excellent. And to all of you tuning in and watching this as well, I hope that you... You've enjoyed the show and you've been inspired to make more music and you're feeling more. I'm gonna duplicate this over and we're gonna reuse it. Yeah. And you feel inspired to make more music and uh, I hope that you will do that and you will share it 
with the rest of the world because what we need is beautiful music at the moment. Oops, and I fixed this clip, so I'm just gonna copy this one over here so that we have, you can see that I'm missing the first, uh, the first hits here. If I undo, I'm missing those two, right? So let's put back the one that I fixed. Ah, oh, snap, hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I can see that we're getting towards the end here. I can't control my mouse anymore. Um, yeah, so let's move out of this section and Let's add a bit of action here. So I'm gonna split this clip right here and I'm gonna go in, select everything in the clip and put it up one octave. So now instead of doing the contour, which is big leap down, one up, two down, one up, it's gonna be big leap up, one up, down and up. Okay, so I'm just changing again what we already have. I could do again something in here with the piano if I wanted to. And we ain't got time for that. And actually these two, let's try to put them up one more octave. Let's hear how this sounds. Oh, no, what happened? Ah, there we go. <laughs> And then we don't want to play. No, actually this is fine. Yeah, and okay, like um, we're out of time, but like this would be where I would probably introduce a variation to either either the drums or to to the to the piano here. I would maybe try to play in a, a different. A uh, different piano piece here, and um, we're at all like two minutes and forty-five seconds. So this this other piano part. I mean, let's just do something experimental here. Let's try to take the whole part and invert it, right? Uh, and then let's drop it down. Sorry. Let's go back to inverting it, and then I'm gonna go out of fold and into scale. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is just take everything and move it down uh, two, two steps in the scale, right? So this is what it sounds like now. So if I move it, oh, I'm going to move it up because we jump down one octave. So five steps up. Come on, let's do it. And then I'm gonna call this plus five. Wow, I need to fix some quantization in here as well, but that's for later. And I could do the same thing in here. I'm gonna be in scale, copy everything and go one, two, three, four, five steps up. And then the kalimba here is gonna be a problem because I can't really go up five steps here. So we'll have to hear what that sounds like. And you know, just for kicks, let's take all of this and uh, I'm gonna consolidate this with command J all of this consolidate, make it into a new clip. And then I can take all of that and move it up five semitones as well. So we're doing a tonal shift uh, right now. So go in here, five semitones up. Awesome. And let's hear the transition and see if we're, if we're good. And let's take the drums and if, let's try to play that double time. Oh no, 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 that's not good. Uh, forget about that. Uh, okay, let's hear this transition. Ah, uh, we have the harmonica too, I forgot that. So let's uh, duplicate time here, and let's take out the harmonica here. Ah, except for the last pieces here, so I'm gonna delete that and then copy this over. Boom, uh, because these two, we can also pitch up five semitones. We can try that, I don't know if it's gonna work. Probably. And let's go to push. I'm just gonna press record here and try to add something in with the repeat button.
Oh my god, that's horrible. Some of it was good, but I'm gonna undo that. That didn't work. Okay, let's listen to the full composition. <laughs> so I'm gonna fold everything back in so we can see what's going on here. Yeah. Thank you for watching. It was a... It was a pleasure presenting for you, and I hope you learned something. Maybe a little bit weird uh, with that section being so small with the drums in and out, but hey, it's art. <laughs> and I can arrange this uh, in more detail, but I got an idea, yeah. And let's add in some automation here. So I'm going to record automation with the uh, rever reverb and the effects. Huge delay on the on the Monica here. Again, huge delay, and I'm gonna catch this. Something went wrong. Look at that magical chord I accidentally ended up pushing over all the way. That was the perfect conclusion. <laughs> okay, so there's some tonal stuff that wasn't working out uh, with the uh, with the kalimba in the end. But again, uh, we got a really fast arrangement going here. We got uh, some quick and dirty sound design stuff going on. And I'm fairly happy with what I got here. And uh, and I'm going to arrange this uh, with, with, with a bit more detail. But I hope it covers... Uh, some of the ways that we can go from a very rough 8 or 16 bar idea to get a nice timbre that we uh, that we can work with and then um, and then just get a quick and dirty arrangement down it's just like do something keep doing something if if you feel like oh my god i'm i'm blocked or take a walk have a coffee uh, and then just just do something as soon as you do something you need to reevaluate what you've been doing, but if you have nothing, there's nothing to evaluate. Um, yeah, and with that said, uh, let's go into the Q and A and evaluate all of this. <laughs> hey Raz, how's it going? Sounds really, really nice. Very positive. Good Thank you. you. Um, I got a question here from Miko, who's been waiting very patiently. Thanks for that, Miko. 
uh, yeah. would like you to go over again uh, a couple of things. So first, how do you group a track? Uh, he'd like to see you do that again. And he'd like to see a bit about routing in and out. He'd like to know how you can route some audio into a group and then how you can route the output of a group somewhere else. So yeah, yeah. maybe just go through the in and out part. Okay, absolutely. So um, let me let me mess this up and then redo it. Okay, so I have things in a group now, and sometimes you want to take things out of a group. Um, and I can I can copy these three tracks. I find this the easiest. So I select all three, and I drag them with the mouse, and I hold down the Option key, so that's going to make a copy now. And oops, sorry. Notice that there's a little um, a little uh, arrow here that shows me that I'm outside of the group. I could also just drop drop it over here, so I'm totally sure that it's out of the group. And now I could uh, I could delete the group and I'm just gonna copy this effect because I want to add it in again. Um, so I am gonna click the group and delete it. Uh, otherwise, sorry, I should also show this. Uh, otherwise you can click a track in the group and drag it out, okay? So it's outside of the group now, but you can only do that uh, until you have the last track in the group, you can't move that out. You see, it won't let me do that. So I could co copy that one out. Um, and then, uh, then I could delete this. And just for kicks, let's uh, let's recolor these so I can see what's going on. I'm gonna remove these again because I don't want duplicates. Uh, so to create a group, I'm gonna select uh, the, the the first track, and then I'm gonna hold Shift, and then I can select um, a uh, a region here, right? So I can select from the first one over to the last one, and I'm selecting all three now, and I can right click and I can say group tracks here, okay? And this automatically routes all the audio from the tracks in the group to the group. And then the group is routing audio to the master channel, okay? So the master is now receiving all the audio, except for the first one here, which is sending audio directly out of the sound card because I don't want my little mastering chain here to already uh, to work on an already mastered tracks. So that's why this one is set to external out, but all the rest is set to master, okay? So the group here is outputting to master. And what I could do is I could make an, a, a track that would receive all my instruments, okay? So if I fold in the group, I'm not using this melody one, um, I will keep it. So I'm, I way at the end here on the right, I'm gonna say insert audio track, and I'm gonna call this melody bus okay and it's going to take audio from uh, nothing okay what i'm going to do instead is i'm going to take my group here which is going to be kalimba group yeah and i'm going to say audio 2 and then you, it should send it to the melody bus and notice that i didn't put in the hashtag the twitter hashtag here because my bus i don't care what the track number it is i keep my buses way at the end i would have a bass bus uh, or a drum and bass bus, a melody bus, and maybe a vocal bus, uh, and then like sound effects and atmosphere bus, okay? So I'm gonna take all my, uh, all my melodic material here and I'm gonna send that to the melody bus. So audio two again. And if you don't see these uh, routing options, you need to click the in and, in and output over here on the right side, the IO, okay? Uh, and there are shortcuts. Um, for all of this uh, bro slim if you hold command option you can press uh, i for inputs and outputs l for the for the uh, uh, oh, i forgot what it's called where we can see the clip view and the track view the detail view and b for the browser uh, and r for return tracks so bro slim just remember that um, so let's take the harmonica and output that to the melody bus and let's take uh, the verlitz and the piano and i'm going to select both of them now because i can always save time uh, by selecting multiple things, and I'm gonna send both of these to the melody bus, right? So all of this is now playing to the melody bus, but I'm not really hearing them because my melody bus needs to have monitor set to in, okay? So, so this now has, this has all my melody, our melodic material, and I could add a glue compressor here now, and maybe also, uh, ah, sorry. Ah, I, I, I totally messed up that, uh, that reverb there. I automated. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, 
So on my melody bus here, uh, I could I could add a bit of mixing. I could make sure that I don't have any super low frequency material, or I could also add a flanger. I could compress it just a little bit. Or I could record here. So if I wanted to record all of this together, I could record that. So let's try to let's try to record just this. Uh, I'm running out of time. We can just keep talking about all these things. There's so much cool stuff to to do. So the two kalimbas here. Let me just try to record that onto the melody bus. So let's do that. Like that. Okay, and then if I want to use this, I would need to make a new audio track that I could drag it up to because this one is, uh, the monitor set to in so it can't play tracks. You can see that it's grayed out. It's not gonna, it's not gonna play it if I'm over. Yeah, it's not gonna play it. Uh, but this here I could now work on and say, let's add this one in, but an octave below. Cool. And then I would send this to the melody bus as well. Yeah. Um, so I hope that answered your question a bit. Um, I think it's a super uh, powerful thing uh, that we have easy routing of, uh, of of audio in here. And another neat trick is that we can open up the um, the volume meters here. So there, it's more when we're mixing, uh, it's it's easier for us to see what's happening with the audio levels and what where we've set the fader. Yeah, what else we got? Cool, thanks, Raz. Um, I got another question here from Stian who's asked, what are the things on the right-hand side that say reverb, delay, and master? Oh, that's such a good question. Yes. Um, so these are return tracks, and I've just made them smaller, but it's basically the same as an audio track that we have here that only contains, in this case, one effect. And what it's doing is it's constantly waiting to have audio sent from one of these tracks. So if I play my drums, here you can see that I have red dots, which means there's automation, but I'm also sending some. Uh, I'm now sending audio from here behind the program and over to this track. And you can see that there's volume happening here. Um, and it's going into, sorry, here, it's going into the reverb here. And now it's not. Okay, so it's a nice way to, to be able to send multiple sounds into the same space. For example, these three tracks here, they all send uh, information into the delay and to the reverb here. And if I turn it off, I could also solo just the effect. This is just the reverb. And you can add more out here if you say insert return track. And the way to use it is that you can go into your audio effects folder. And then of course, the first thing we do is we find echo and we drag echo over to my return track C. And now you can see that I have the option to send uh, information to another of these return tracks. Let me just make them a bit smaller. There we go. Um, and then echo here. Uh, you want your first effect always to be at 100% wet. So I could add in a uh, a, a chorus, uh, no, sorry, I could add in a flanger here afterwards. And this one is totally okay to not have at 100%, but I want this first one to be at 100% uh, so that I'm not getting any of the uh, signal I'm sending. So let's try to listen to the uh, to the drums going into this. And now I can use all of the nice features of uh, And if I turn this down, the effect disappears. Right? Yeah. So the return tracks are really nice. Uh, good, good, uh, good feature. Good question. All right, uh, we're uh, we're at the end, everyone. Great one, Rasmus. Thanks a lot. Yes, uh, likewise. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. <laughs> pleasure, pleasure, pleasure.
And definitely Echo makes a lot of sense on that track. I assume it's going to stay there. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining in. Thanks for participating in the in the sec in this session. And um, and yeah, I've linked uh, once more our feedback form to the in the in the chat window. I also linked uh, Rasmus meditation music project called Ambience, which you can check on Spotify or wherever you get your streams from. And um, this is it for me. Thanks a lot again for tuning in, and uh, I'll hand over to Ras for the the last words. Thanks, Merlin, for moderating the Q and A, uh, and and goodbye for now. See you next time. Yeah, everyone, it was uh, it was a big pleasure to uh, to to share this information with you, and I'm really really thankful for all of you who uh, who post good questions, and thanks to Merlin for answering all of that and uh, for keeping iry vibes in uh, in the chat definitely stay in touch uh, we're all part of the same big uh, music family and uh, do uh, get in touch with us uh, get in touch with ableton uh, if you want to do more stuff uh, like this i'm not going to give you antoine's email he's probably going to kick me afterwards but what i can do is tell you that you should definitely also stay in touch with uh, romkraft we might be based in Copenhagen, but we have big uh, arms and a far reach, and we would love to have you as part of our uh, music making family. So go into the website, make a user, sign up for the newsletter if you want. We're expanding our online community at the moment, and we're working on adding in a, uh, a online course, which is gonna be in English as well. So if you're interested in that, fill out the, uh, the, the email form, and you can tick off that you're interested in online courses and you can write me a little one. Hey, Raz, uh, I speak English, so I prefer you not talking in Danish all the time. Awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope to see you around sometime for uh, for an event. And uh, if you are in Copenhagen, the door here is m open most of the time. So do get in touch and come by, have some coffee, buy a mug, uh, save us through Corona. Uh, commercials over. Thank you, everyone. It was a pleasure. Thanks, goodbye everyone. <laughs> Cheers.